Welcome to a new lesson. Today, we are going to take what you know about Scratch and we are going to change it up and we are going to use Scratch programming to make music, which seems like a little strange. Normally you would use, you know, a piano to make music. Today we're going to use computer code to make music. So, of course, we are at our favorite website, scratch.mit.edu. You have signed in with your account and you are looking for the create button here to start a new program. And here we go. Of course, every time we start a program, we have that cat and I'm going to throw him in the trash. Sorry, cat. I don't need you today. Let's do this. Once we get the cat out of the picture, go with me and let's grab some sprites that have to do with music. So again, to add new sprites, you're looking for this little button down here that still looks like a cat. Once I press that, I love that I can um, filter and see sprites that belong to different categories. So let's go to the music option. And of course you're programming along with me and you can pause if you need to, but let's grab some things that look musical and we're gonna build kind of a concert. So I'm gonna say, I'll take the symbol and let's go get another one. Um, so you, again, grab whichever ones you want, but let's get two different sprites or three different sprites on the screen. And we are going to teach these sprites what to do, and we're gonna teach them how to make music. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm down here at the bottom, I will click on one of my sprites to have it selected. You'll notice I'm here in the brain of that sprite, and it has nothing in its brain. So what we will say is, over in the events, um, we are looking for when this sprite is clicked. So again, it'll feel like you're playing the symbol because you'll come hit it with your mouse, right? Instead of a drumstick. But what we can do is we can teach this symbol how to make music. So if you will notice up here in the top left, we have the code, we have costumes. Now it has two different costumes, right? They're not very different, but they do have two different looks to him. And then he has a sounds tab. Now, the neat thing about most of these musical sprites is they come with a few different sounds and you can test them out by clicking on them and pressing play. Oh, that was cool. So you've got all sorts of different sounds that um, your sprite already knows how to make. If you are unhappy with those sounds and you want new sounds, you can actually train your sprite to make new sounds down here with this button. So you could say, really? Um, there are some built-in sounds. If you want to get super fancy, you could record yourself. So you, you could create a sound and have it recorded and be one of the sounds the symbols can make. But just for example, let's click this, choose a sound. And of course, there's more sounds than you could ever want to have. But I think one of the neat things is you have kind of percussion. So you could grab different types of drums. Also, loops. I think loops are pretty neat because they're really sounds. Right, so it's not just one note. So let's go grab, I don't know, let's grab one of these and click on it. And now you'll notice that that is one of the sounds that this symbol knows how to make. Symbol echo. Pick a sound or two, add some sounds into your sprite. Pause the video if you need to. And then we are going to move back to code. So we're gonna come back to his brain. And if we go to the sound option here, now you'll notice that we've got play sound and start sound, and those sound exactly the same, which I think is kind of strange. But play sound means this sound has to get all the way finished before you move on to do what's coming next. Start sound means all you have to do is press play and then you move on. And so the sound could be still playing as you do something else, like it, as you start the next sound. So you could accidentally get lots of sounds on top of each other. Let's do this. I'm going to grab the play sound and I will attach that to when the, when the sprite is clicked. And so now when I hit run and I hit my symbol. Awesome. And now you could get really fancy if you want. You could say, I really want it to do that, and then follow up with another sound. <laughs> so you could compose whatever kind of sound you want. You can get as creative as you want to get and make the most beautiful music come out of that sprite. Now, it's kind of boring to look at though. So it sounds really cool, but it's a little boring to look at when you click it, so let's get kind of fancy. We could deal with his different looks. 
So I could say, switch this costume. And then I always like to switch it back when I'm done so that it goes back to normal. So watch this. So that, that spices up just a little bit, but I think one of the coolest things you can do doesn't have to be just with the costumes. So if you are here in your looks tab, you'll notice you know you have your costumes and your speech bubbles, but as you scroll down, of course you can change the size. So you can make it a little bit bigger, you can make it a little bit smaller. Um, you have different effects that get kind of weird. So let's try this. Let's play with the effect just a little bit. So again, program along with me. Let's go um, change his color effect. Now, anytime I like to change the effect when it's done, I like to set it back to zero. So this set block, I'm gonna put that at the very bottom to make him be normal again when it's all over. So here we go, watch this. So I love the fact that I get the color to change just a little bit, and then we take it back to normal when it's all said and done. One other trick, if you wanna go up to the motion, you could make him move just a little bit. I always like to, again, undo whatever I did at the, at the end of it. And you could put as many movement blocks in there as you want. You can have him wiggle, you could have him do whatever. Here, the color effect is the default. But there are lots of really weird effects. Brightness is pretty cool. But again, if I, if I change his brightness, then you want to come back down and change his brightness back to zero. So, beautiful. Here's what we've got. You have all the tools that you need to make basically a band. So you can put as many sprites out there as you want. You can teach each different sprite to make different music. So let's say our symbol we're very happy with, we love it. Let's hop over to the drum kit. So down here at the very bottom, I will click on the drum kit. Now I'm in the drum kit's brain and pause the video real quick, but do the same type of thing with your drum kit. Tell it when it's clicked and then you teach it what music to make and what visuals to achieve. Pause the video, make that drum kit amazing or that second sprite amazing and we'll come back and we'll finish up here in just a second. Okay, so you have two different instruments and they do different things and you love them. A few random tricks, of course, you could throw in repeat blocks too and you can, um, in the green operators, if you want the color to change by something random, that's not always the same, you could do a random number so that every time I click my drum, I don't know what color it's gonna choose to be. It can change to be a randomized color. Of course, we definitely want to have a better backdrop because this is ugly. So we'll throw a better backdrop in there so it feels like we're kinda, whoops. So it feels like we're on stage. Now, you are not limited to just two sprites. You can have as many sprites as you want to in there, which is beautiful. But I'm gonna show you one last fancy trick. This trick is great if you are a musician, if you're in band class, if you've learned um, notes or you play the piano, watch this trick. Once I put my guitar in there or whatever other sprite I have, I'm going to say, when somebody clicks that sprite, now watch my mouse. If I go down here to the very bottom and I click this add an extension, there is an extension for music. So I can just add more music options. And so now, in addition to all the different colors I have here, now I have music at the bottom. And here's the coolest thing about music. First of all, I can play all sorts of different um, percussion sounds. I also have control over how long that sound lasts. So if you're a musician and you know anything about beats like quarter notes, half notes, eighth notes, you have control over that. And you can also, I think this is really neat, you can decide what type of sound you should hear. Should it sound like an organ? This note should sound like a cello, whatnot. And watch how cool this is. You can even play specific notes from the piano. So if I wanted to play a B flat um, for two beats on the cello. Beautiful, I don't know why your electric guitar sounds like cello, but it, but it does. Now, if you string a bunch of these together, you might even be able to compose a famous song. You could string just the right notes together and the right beats to do something like this. 
you can, again, get as creative as you want. You're going to make whatever beautiful music, get several sprites out there, make them all interact visually, make them play whatever music you want, and then you are going to create your own band that is interactive. You want to be certain that you give this thing a name. You don't want it to be untitled. So up here in the top, you want to call it Making Music. And then you want, we've never done this before, but you want to be sure that you share this project. That means other people could come take a look at your band and play your instruments. What I would like for you to do today with your awesome music is I would love for you to take that and add it to my studio. So to get to the studio after you've saved your project and you're done and you've got as many instruments as you want and they're all amazing, you will go to my studio. Now I will put this link in the description of the YouTube video so you can click on that link. That will let you take a look at other people's awesome musical programs and to add your own down here at the very bottom, you have an add projects button and it will show you the projects that you have. So you could say, I want to add the making music program that I have created. And in this way, people can come play around and play your instruments. And you can also click on someone else's and see what they have come up with. So today you're gonna to make me an amazing band and then you're gonna add it to that studio so that other people can see your work.